You know, I was planning on making a Texo 3D video, but so much stuff was happening between when it was first published on the 29th of September last year and now. Texo video popped out, Dream Booth and Laura went wild, Texo image was pretty much the highlight for the past three months, while there's the whole AI art protest in December, Stable Diffusion version 2, and ChatGBT that was released near the end of November. And these are just the big ones. And that was a lot to process already, especially in such a short amount of time. And today, I'm actually not revealing visiting Texto 3D because I missed my chance talking about it. It's more like I am reintroducing it because a few days ago, Texto 4D was published. It took only four whole months for these researchers to find out how to make these Texto 3D models move. Let that sink in. Okay, but let me correct myself here. The Texto 3D research that you've probably seen is called Dream Fusion and was actually published by Google. And this new Texto 4D research called Math 3D, short for Make a Video 3D, comes from two of the same authors that published Meta make a video research which is a text to video ai so they probably look over at google's work and we're like yeah i can do that too and we probably can also make it move and bam text to 4d with the same superhero dog that was flying in a video into a 3d video or even a mesh that flies through the sky and to clarify this constant bounds between 3D and 4D, they named it text to 4D because the fourth dimension in this case is time, with respect to a 3D model. So what I'm guessing is that if it's a 2D model, it'll just be called a video. But anyways, also because they are the first ones that were able to generate 3D videos from text, so they can pretty much name it whatever they want, hence text to 4D. So to create less confusion throughout this video, I'll be calling the results 4D results, not 3D videos, since text to 4D generates nerf videos not 3d videos if i want to be more precise it also doesn't really help that the research name has 3d in it so i'll just refer it as text to 4d ai so how this ai was able to achieve this is by combining the idea of nerve dynamic nerve and text to 3d you have probably heard of nerve which is using multiple images to reconstruct a scene it's pretty much just photogrammetry ai but dynamic nerve is one of the newest nerve research where it not only can reconstruct a scene but also play it over time so it's kind of like a 3d video where it can view the scene from any angle. So this dynamic nerve with the addition of text to 3D made this text to 4D AI possible. But what is also surprising is that the whole model did not train on any 4D or 3D data. It was trained with merely text image pairs plus unlabeled videos. Unbelievable, right? So I tried to comprehend the AI's architecture to understand how they have trained it. And to be honest, I was left with more questions than I initially had. So let me just show you some more results instead. With this crocodile playing the drums, you can tell that the details aren't really clear and the length of the results is really short too. But what is notable is that the hands move pretty coherently and the hi-hat moves correctly only when the slightly invisible drumstick hits it. We can probably forget the fact that Crocodile's arms are usually really short and move on to a silver humanoid robot flipping a coin. While its whole purpose is to flip the coin, you can actually view the result in a depth map form, where the parts that are the closest to the camera will be the most red. And here is a better example, if you look at this alien playing the piano, you can see the red parts constantly changing as the viewing angle changes. So this is pretty much a live 3D depth map that illustrates how coherent the 4D result is. What's even better is that their online web demo also lets you view these videos in the mesh mode where you can look at the 4D result with whatever angle you want. So you can experience these 4D videos and check out this cute corgi with whatever angle you want. I also observed that if an object is mentioned in your text prompt, it'll stay coherent and consistent throughout the whole thing. So if you look at the violin and the bow that this robot is holding, the bow and the violin never gets distorted and stays together without breaking. Or the skeleton drinking wine. The wine glass is always visible yet see-through like a normal glass, with liquids that actually follow the law of gravity, which is just sick. But there are also cases where the AI just fails, like this bear driving a car with a steering wheel inside out and also becoming the front of the car. But props to the shark swimming in the desert, where it is just stuck there, since the text prompt doesn't really make any sense either. And the cat singing is just kind of cute, so let me just leave it here. This text to 4D research also made image conditioning possible where an image can be used as a reference to generate a 4D result. How they did this was that they basically convert the image into clip embeddings to replace the text embeddings as input, but how well it works is unknown since they only showed these four 4D results and their codes are <laughs> closed sourced. They also came up with this Temporal Aware Super Resolution Optimizer, which is probably a 4D nerf upscaler if I am understanding it correctly. Kind of cool and it works pretty well. I actually would definitely love to see some nerf upscaling research. That would be sick. <laughs> no way, someone actually did this already. 
Uh, it's called Nerf SR. I'm surprised that it was published in July last year and went under my radar. Just remember, add the word GitHub or paper at the end of its name when you Google it, or else you will be greeted with... That is an external overview of the Nerf Fortnite SR. But anyways, you know when you are the first one to open a new door of research when you have to establish the baselines instead of testing against one? If you want to check out more results, definitely go to their project page. I'll link it along with the paper down in the description. Thank you so much for watching. A big shout out to Andrew Laschelius. Chris Ledoux, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Subscribe to see more, and I'll see y'all in the next one.